Good morning, my name's James. And my name is Helen. It's lovely to see you all this morning. It's great to be able to welcome you to the Gold Hill online service. I really hope that you um, will enjoy it, that you'll be able to worship, that you'll be able to learn more about all that God has for you. And it's a beautiful day today, it is a isn't it? The sun day. has been shining all week. It has, and it's just fantastic, isn't it? Just great to be able to get outside. Yes. What's that been happening at nine o'clock this morning? Yes, it was great. We had a children's service this morning at nine o'clock. Shona led it. It was really good, really cool. fun. Great. And that's happening again next week, nine o'clock in the morning. And you enjoyed it, didn't you, Josh? Yeah. Good, good, excellent. And um, we're now going to go over and uh, Josh, uh, myself and Helen had a little chat earlier um, about and watch some um, movies about the Fuller people and we would like to invite you to join in with that now. If you receive our daily WhatsApp prayer points, you'll be aware that we've been praying this week specifically for our mission partners in Senegal. Some of you will wonder what mission partners are. Mission partners are people that um, God has called and we have recognised that calling as a church family and we have sent them around the world and also in this country. And um, Kevin and Debbie have been in Senegal and they've been working with an unreached people group called the Fuller. We have promised to pray for the Fuller people throughout this year. And this morning we're going to see a little video showing what life is like for the Fuller children and see some of the things that our mission partners are up to in Senegal with these children. So let's just take a few moments, enjoy this video. Cool. 
Cool, Josh, that was good, wasn't it, watching that video? What were some of the things that really stood out for you? Uh, them playing a lot of games the, when they had free time. Free time. So what games did you notice that they were playing? Football. Football, I thought you would notice yeah. that. Any other things? Uh, they were like throwing rocks into a hole. Yeah. And egg and spoon. Yeah. Egg and spoon, yeah. that was really cool. And they all looked happy, they were having fun, weren't they? Using yeah. the things around them. They all them. had smiles on their faces. They did they all did. have smiles, wasn't that fantastic? And um, it's really cool that Kevin and Debbie, the family, can um, care and can um, show Jesus' love to them. Would you like to pray for us? Is that all right? Would you like to do that? That would be really cool. Dear God, we thank you for the fuller people and for our mission partners who are trying to share your love and care with people they are working with. We pray that you would look after the children and families of the fuller people and help our mission partners to keep working hard in sharing their faith with the people they spend time with each day. We pray that the fuller people will learn more about you and choose to follow you with their entire lives. Whatever age they are. Amen. Amen. It's fantastic that we can continue to pray for the fuller people um, as we find out more about them and also see the great things that God has got in store for them. Absolutely. So can we really encourage you to carry on um, carry on praying as maybe a life group, maybe at home on your own, but also as a family. That'd be really good. We're going to do that, aren't we, Josh? Yeah. That'd be really cool. Great. Well, we're going to have a time of worship now. And um, before we go over to uh, Josh, Anto and Sarah, um, I'd just like to really encourage you during this time to think about how you might give in to all that God is, is doing through our church at this time. And um, obviously we're, we're supporting Kevin and Debbie and lots of mission partners. So our giving goes to that, but also to all the work that is going on around the world and around this country and through the church here locally. So it's really an exciting opportunity to give now. And we just really encourage you um, that if you're a regular attender, please give. There's a You can go on the website to the giving page and give there. Um, but also please, there is no pressure if you're joining us for the first time or you may be from other churches, please continue to give to your local home church. That'll be so good. Helen. Yeah, well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can come together as a church family this morning to worship you, to give the glory back to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love you so much and we pray that you would help us during this time to bring focus to you within our lives, Lord. Mm. That you may help us through this time as we continue to be separated but yet together in this way. Amen. 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 We're gonna we're gonna go to one of my favourite um, hymns now. Actually, how great they are. So let's together, as God's people, let's sing it out just as we would if we were gathered. Let's sing it out together and declare our praise to our great God. Oh Lord, my. When I in awesome wonder Consider all the works thy hand hath made I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder Thy power throughout the And sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! And sings my soul. I want 
we turned. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God our God is greater our God is stronger God you are
thrive. In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. Let faith arise. For my champion's not dead, he is alive. And he already knows my every need. Surely he will come and Let faith rise and see the kingdom come. I lift my eyes for the battle has been won. My God is faithful, and every single word He says is true. Sing that verse again. Let faith arise and see the kingdom come. Let faith rise. And see the kingdom come, I lift my eyes. For the battle has been won, my God is faithful. And every single word He says is true. God of miracles, God of miracles come, we need. Natural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. God of miracles. God of miracles come. We need your supernatural love. To break through, nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. This world, this world is shaking, but you cannot be shaken. Thy heart is breaking, but I'm not broken yet. Your love is fearless. Let me to be courageous too. There's nothing impossible. This world is shaking, but you cannot be shaken. My heart is breaking, but I'm not broken yet. Oh, love is fearless. Help me to be courageous too Oh, nothing is impossible For the God miracles come We need your supernatural love To break through Nothing's impossible you're the God of miracles, God of miracles, God of miracles, come, we need your supernatural love to break through, nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. 
You're the God of miracles. You're the God of Thank you so much, Josh, Anto, and Sarah. Let's just pray. Father God, thank you that nothing is impossible for you. Thank you that you are the God of miracles. And we declare that today. Whatever our circumstances, we thank you that nothing is impossible with you. Wow. And Lord, we just want to, we're excited by what you are going to do in these days. And we, we want to proclaim your name. And we believe that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. So Lord Jesus, um, we want to open our hearts. We want to open our minds. We want to learn more about you. We want to grapple with scripture and we want to live it out. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to hand over to Dave now, who's going to bring our message on Jesus is healing. Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Hello, good morning. My name's Dave, part of the leadership at Gold Hill, and I'm really glad this morning to be able to share a little bit uh, as we explore together another aspect of who Jesus is. In the middle of all of this chaos, in the middle of all of this that's going on around us, who is Jesus? And today we're going to focus on the aspect of Jesus, that he is a healer. We're going to look at a couple of stories that are side by side in one of the eyewitness accounts written about him. But before I do that, I want to get us thinking about this. So to do that, I'm going to show you a picture. Here it is. This is of the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro, which, as you can see uh, in, in the last month, it was lit up with lights to dress Jesus as if he were a doctor, as if he was a, a healthcare worker uh, with, the, with the lab coat and with the stethoscope and with a lot. I want to ask you, what do you make of that? I'm going to put it up again in a moment uh, and give you uh, a minute or so to, to have, have a look at it. Uh, reflect on it. You may just want to look at it and see what, what sort of stirs in your heart or in your mind. Uh, if you're with other people, feel free to have a chat and discuss it. What do you make of that as an image? What does it say to you? What does it speak to you? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, what's it do for you as you look at it? Well, I don't know what you made of that. I imagine uh, in front of uh, laptops and TVs and screens uh, around as people are watching this, there is a whole range of different responses to that internally. I imagine some people thought, oh, isn't that brilliant? What a wonderful way of, uh, of celebrating healthcare workers and of all those who are doing so much at the minute. Brilliant, fantastic, thumbs up. I imagine there might be some people who went, mm, not so sure about that. It's a, it's a statue of Jesus, and to sort of put something onto it that isn't Jesus, and I'm not sure about that. that, that makes me feel a little bit uneasy. I guess, for what it's worth, for, 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 for my part, uh, it's a statue, it was made by people, people can do what they want with it. Um, and, uh, and for me, it does capture something of what we're talking about today. Because people in some ways saw that statue and thought it would be a good thing to reflect something to do with healing, and to do with making people better, to making people more whole. Something of, uh, of, of Jesus captured that for people, so they thought it was a good thing to do. And the truth is that as we look at Jesus, one of the things we see about him is that he is a healer. And that's what we're looking at this morning, looking at Jesus as healer. 
To do that, I want to look at a uh, one, one chapter of the Bible in Matthew chapter 8. But as we do that, um, I've been reading a book uh, at the minute. It's a book by uh, J. John and a guy called Chris Wally. Uh, here it is. It's called Jesus Christ, The Truth. And it's basically a summary of what Christians believe about Jesus. It goes through various parts of his life on earth, talks about what Christians believe of him, talks about some of the evidence and the, and, and the reasons why it's worthwhile exploring this and ultimately believing in it. And it's a really good book, and I wanted to recommend it. Maybe you're exploring Jesus. Maybe you're thinking, mm, I'd like to know a little bit more about what Christians believe about Jesus. I'll make sure that uh, links to it are at the end in the rolling PowerPoint so you can find, um, find out where to get it there. Uh, but in the section that's all about miracles that Jesus performed, uh, this is something that they say. Jesus' miracles don't just show us that he is the Messiah or God's anointed one. They show us what kind of Messiah he is. In the miracles, we see in particular something of Jesus' compassion and mercy. And as we look at this, these miracles that Jesus performs in this passage, these healings that he performs, we're going to see something of it revealing who he is, something of his heart, something of his authority and his power. So Matthew chapter 8, we're going to read the first four verses to start with. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. This is a very simple, short story. It takes only four verses to tell. But essentially there's a, there's a man who has leprosy who comes to Jesus and asks to be healed. Now leprosy was and is a horrid thing to have. Absolutely awful, uh, debilitating illness, disease to have. But they also carried a social cost to them as well. In addition to all of the pain and the, and, and the suffering of having that skin uh, disease, it also meant that in Jewish culture, people who, who, who had that, were shut out of society, were kept away, were kept separate for fear that people would become ceremonially and spiritually and religiously unclean by touching someone who was seen as unclean. And so this person with leprosy coming to Jesus and saying, "Be if you're willing, you can make me clean, you can make me whole, you can heal me, was a radical step, was a bold step. People should have at the time looked at it and gone, he shouldn't be doing that. He should be staying away. He shouldn't be coming near to other people. How irresponsible of him. But Jesus doesn't respond like that. Jesus doesn't say, you're dirty, stay away. In fact, he says very clearly, I'm willing. This man, it's an interesting choice of words. If you're willing, then make me clean. He would have met in his life so many people who were unwilling. Unwilling to come close. Unwilling to befriend him. Unwilling to be a companion to him. And he says to Jesus, if, if you're willing, I know you can do this. And Jesus says, I am. These miracles don't just display Jesus's power and his authority. They display something of his heart. And it's a heart that says, I will come close. I will touch you, even if the rest of the world won't. Nothing is too dirty, too sticky, too icky, too horrible for Jesus to come close. We, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that this man who had a horrible disease was then completely healed and restored. This is not just a story about Jesus coming close when the rest of the world would not, but it is a story about that. It reveals something of God's heart, something of Jesus's heart, that as we look at Jesus choosing to come close to this man, choosing not to send him away, not to push him away, it depicts God's heart in wanting us to draw near to him and being willing to receive us and make us whole. The rest of the world at the minute is keeping distant from one another. And at a time when everyone else is staying away, we need to remember that Jesus wants to come close. Jesus is wanting to be near us. Jesus is willing, not just willing, but eager to be near us. Maybe nothing to do with the coronavirus and the times we're in, but I know that for many of us, most of us, if not all of us, there are times when we feel as though we don't deserve other people or God to be near us. We feel as though we've messed up, we've let down. This thing in our life is too difficult, is too icky, is too horrible for God. That, that addiction or that habit or that illness that we haven't 
that, that we don't really want other people to know about because we feel ashamed or because we, we don't know where we stand with it ourselves. Jesus wants to say to you, I'm willing. I'm willing to come close. No matter what it is, no matter what it is that you think separates us, I'm going to come close. That's the first little snippet as we look at this passage. But then the healings carry on. A slightly different one now, starting at verse 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralysed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I've not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. This story is almost the exact opposite of the first story. The first story was an outcast. The second story is someone who was uh, esteemed, had power, had authority. The first story was someone who came close to Jesus. The second story is about healing someone who isn't even in the picture. There is a similarity, though, between these two stories. At least one. And it's this. Healing was asked for. Someone came and asked Jesus for healing. In one case, it was the man with leprosy himself. In another case, it was that person's boss. But in both cases, healing was requested. And actually, look at Jesus's response. Because this man uh, says, I, I want you to heal my servant. And Jesus says, well, shall, shall I come and meet him so that I can heal him? And the centurion basically says, no, 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 you don't need to do that. You don't need to come and do it yourself. You can send one of your servants, send an angel, I guess he's thinking, or send one of your disciples or, or whatever it is. But you don't personally need to come close because you have authority. You don't need to be in the same room to heal someone. You have power everywhere, so you don't need to come close. But can you do it for me? And Jesus' response is, is kind of spectacular. Listen to these words about Jesus. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. It's not often that we see Jesus being described as amazed. What amazes him? The faith of this man. The fact that this man so trusts, so understands Jesus' power and authority, and so wants to throw himself onto that and rely on that. Jesus is blown away by it. And I want to ask you and ask myself, does the faith, that I exhibit towards God each day amaze Jesus. I want to amaze Jesus. It turns out you can. The way that you amaze Jesus is by displaying faith, by exhibiting faith, by exhibiting trust that he has power and authority and throwing yourself on that and saying, I trust you. This is what I want to happen. This is what I need. This is the brokenness. This is the area where, where I want to see breakthrough. Lord, can you do it? Turns out that can amaze Jesus, what a beautiful picture. But in this, if in the first uh, of these two miracles we saw something of the heart of Jesus that wants to come close, in here we see a big display of his power. The truth is, Jesus has authority and power to heal wherever, whenever, whoever, and whatever. There is no distance that he needs to travel that he hasn't already travelled. He's come close. There's nothing that is too big and too dirty and too difficult for him to heal. He can do it. Doesn't matter who you are. The first person had leprosy, he was an outcast. The second person may not have been an outcast in Roman society, but he wasn't, he wasn't Jewish. And in fact, that's what Jesus goes on to talk about. Listen to this, these are some slightly difficult words from Jesus. Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. Those difficult words from Jesus basically saying, I've seen this, this great faith from someone who's not part of the Jewish people who's not part of the people who are seen as God's people. He's not part of that. He's, he's other. He's separate from that. And yet he is displaying this faith. And he says, actually, loads of people are going to come from east and west, from all different directions, who aren't part of the Jewish people. And they're going to take their place at the feast. They're going to take their place in God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And actually, the people who should have been there, the people who were invited first, well, some of them are choosing not to. Some of them won't be part of it. Some of them will be gone. And actually, that's going to be very hard for them. The question isn't, are we part of God's club or not? 
are we part of a church or not? Are we part of the Jewish people or the Christian people or not? The question isn't about what camp we belong to, which group we're in. The question is, are we going to trust in Jesus? He is the one who has this power. He is the one who has this authority. He wants to come close. We saw his heart. He also has the power to do something. We see his authority. And then as the story carries on, we actually see something of where that authority is going to come from. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. He took on infirmity or sickness or frailty or ill health. He took on the diseases. He bore that, that, that disease, that sickness. What does that, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that every time Jesus healed someone, he, he became sick on their behalf. It's talking about something bigger than that. Those words that Matthew is quoting are found in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53. And it's this great passage that speaks of a servant, a suffering servant, coming to suffer on behalf of people. And in the midst of that, we hear that he took on people's diseases and he took on people's sicknesses and frailties and infirmities. And really, it's a picture of what would happen at the cross, because that is where Jesus did take on all of our sickness, all of our ill health, all of our wrong, all of our brokenness. The Bible talks about sin, this, this attitude that says, I don't want anything to do with God, I'm going to live my own way. That's the root of every problem. It's the root of where every evil and every sickness and everything comes from. Not because I do something wrong and so God makes me sick, but because I'm in this brokenness and this world and this, this body and this life that likes to rebel against God. And as a result, sickness is all around and ill health is all around and disaster is all around and all kinds of wrong things are rooted, the Bible tells us, in the fact that the world has turned its back on God. And so Jesus took all of that on at the cross. And because of that, at the cross, he took on all of those things. He could then give life and health and wholeness and freedom because all of that death and all of that sickness and all of that sin is on him. Matthew's using this verse to quote to quote a passage which is all about someone stepping in and taking things on behalf of other people. And so in each of these stories about healing, we get a little glimpse, a little picture of what Jesus is about and what Jesus would do. Because what he's about and what he would do is this. He takes on all of our brokenness and he gives us life and wholeness and fullness in return. That would happen in the big way at the cross, that Christ the Redeemer statue with arms outstretched is a picture of what God would do. In some ways, putting a, putting a doctor's coat on that is a beautiful picture of what it means. Because Jesus took our sin, yes. He took our shame, yes. He took our guilt, yes. But he also, in doing so, claims and demonstrates the power and the authority to heal sick and broken bodies. And as he comes forth from the grave three days later, as he rises from the dead, he shows his power over death itself. There is nothing too big, nothing too mighty that Jesus is not able to overcome. And so where does that land for us? Where is it that we need God's healing touch? Where is it that we need Jesus to be not just a healer, but our healer? Where is that for you and for me? What do we need to do? Where are the parts of our life that, that are broken? Maybe it is a habit. Maybe it is an addiction. Maybe it is something that nobody else knows about, but that you need Jesus to fix. You need Jesus to do something about. Ask him. Maybe you'll just amaze him with your faith. Say to him, if you're willing to do this, I know that you can. You might just discover that he is, in fact, willing. Jesus can heal. The cross and the resurrection declare that powerfully. But I want to say on a more personal level, Jesus can heal you and Jesus can heal the ones you love. He doesn't always. I don't know why. But he can. And I believe that he will in many cases. So I want to say to you today, pray. Come to the one who is healer. Come to the one who doesn't want you to stay far away and who is not weak. Come to the one who has power and authority and compassion for you. And see what he'll do. It may be that you want someone to pray with you or pray for you. Reach out to someone, ask someone. Say to someone, I'm struggling with this. I've got this pain or I've got this sickness or I've got this ill health or I've got this brokenness in my life and, and I need God's healing and wholeness and restoration over it. Can you pray for me? Ask someone. 
if you'd like someone, uh, one of the leaders from the church, uh, because you don't, you don't know exactly who, who else to turn to, then please do drop us a note. You can drop us a message by going to the homepage of our website. And there's a little button that just says that you want prayer. You can ask for anything through that and we'll get back to you. It may be that you just need to take some time with God by yourself. Seek him yourself. I'm going to pray a very short and simple prayer. And then we each need to seek God in our own ways. Father God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are mighty and that you are powerful. Thank you that you are healer. Thank you that you are not powerless to help us in the ways that we need help. Thank you that you do not stay far away. And Lord, we pray right now. We pray on a big global level for this virus to stop, for you to pour your healing over this whole world, that it would all be put to an end, that all of this coronavirus would be pushed back and driven back. We pray for those who are healers in this world, doctors and nurses and uh, all those who are working in healthcare. We thank you for them. We praise you for them. We ask for your blessing and protection over them. But for each of us, for those areas of brokenness, for those areas where we are not whole, where we are not full, we pray for your healing. Each of us can be thinking or naming what that means for us right now. Lord God, would you pour your healing over that? Would you minister your life into that? We come to you because we know you can. And we come to you asking that you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of the Lord the Holy One is here come bow before him now with reverence and fear in him no sin is found stand on holy ground be still for the presence of the lord the holy one is here be still for the glory of the lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sun! to cleanse and heal
May the presence of Jesus be with you this week um, as we as we go into our weeks together. Yeah. That's one of my favourite songs, that song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Yeah. And I just really encourage you, maybe listen to it on uh, on YouTube at another, another point during your week, maybe where things are tough, just maybe take a few moments and just allow those words to speak into your heart and remind you of this moment when you made that choice um, to uh, press in to all that Jesus has for you. And can I encourage you also to um, have a look on the Gold Hill website at goldhill.org forward slash how to read the Bible and there's some great resources on there where you can continue to look into the theme from this week and, and also looking at Matthew chapter 8 to 11. That'd be so cool. Really encourage you to do that. We, we're trying something new today and I really hope that you'll join us in it. We're going to have two Zoom calls. The first call will be a conversation with Stephen Walker-Williams looking at the message and the theme of today's service. And the second one, you get the opportunity to have coffee with Helen and I. And um, we would really um, love it if you joined us as Stephen would. So there's two Zoom uh, calls and one will just be uh, very informal with uh, coffee and, and chat. Be great to hear what you've been up to. Um, and the other one with Stephen, just looking at the theme and the message. So uh, please do look at the links uh, below the video in this description, and please feel free to join us. Mm. Um, starts at 11.15, time to make a coffee, a cup of tea, maybe a cold drink, and then do join us. So let's just pray together, shall we? Father God, thank you that we've been able to join together as your family. Thank you that we can worship you whatever our circumstances, whatever the positions that we're in, you are God and we can worship you. And I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would fall in the houses and the homes of people now watching this service, that Spirit of the living God fall afresh on them, I pray. Equip them for this coming week and for the days ahead that we may be your church on the move, scattered but on the move, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We look forward to seeing you in those Zoom catch-ups. God bless you. Take care.